everyone, California Conventions blog. It's I'm Ryan. This is Dalton. We are here with David Wald. David, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. Of course. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Why don't we? Uh, so the first question that I have: um, How were you approached for the role of Jacobs in Borderlands Three? Um, that just went out as an audition. Really? Um, yeah, it was just a just a an audition. I got in an email, like a whole bunch of other auditions every day, you know and. I loved the character, like just reading the little bits of dialogue, you know, when they send you an audition, they'll give you, I think I remember what I got with that audition was a picture of the character, mm -hmm. which sometimes you don't get because it's not done being rendered yet, right? Right. Um, so it was a picture of the character, already loved him, read the lines, loved him more, and was just like, I, uh, I, I love this. I love it. I loved this character so much. Nice. So I threw everything I had at it. <laughs> Sweet. Um, well, along with that, uh, I got another follow-up question for that. Um, are you aware of the relationship between your character and Sir Hammerlock? And, I am aware. Okay, and if so, um, did it help you reach the accuracy of your character and their relationship? Did it, I'm sorry, say again? Uh, help you, um, hang on, sorry about that, uh, reach the accuracy of your character. Like, was it able to help you play him better? Well... I mean, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I, I mean, to tell you the truth, I was not aware of their relationship really? at the audition. It wasn't until I, I had booked it that they told me about that. Okay. Um, which I thought was really interesting because, uh, to me, knowing that after having taken a stab at it, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm glad I didn't know. You know, I think it would have it would have been easier for me to fall into some old, you know, older habits and older defaults. I think if I if I had known that about him, I might have wanted to paint him a little bit. You know okay, what I mean? Okay. But uh, uh, no, when I found out, I, it was just extraordinary. And I, I I mean I love the way that it unfolded because again, as I said, uh, you know, having knowing what I knew about the character and being an LGBTQ person myself. Okay. If I'd been armed with that information, it might have tempted me to, you know, to just color it a little bit. Okay. But because of the way, I'll tell you, the thing that impresses me most about these characters and this game uh, is that they managed to, that is the writers for the game, mm -hmm. managed to paint these characters as gay men and there's no, like, there is no mystery, there's no inference, it's straight up, right? Yeah. And yet, and even with, you know, the whole game's not about these guys, so you don't get a tremendous amount of development, you don't get like you would for the main characters or whatever. Um, but somehow these writers have managed to render these characters without making them at all reductive, which is, I mean, there are gay writers in Hollywood who haven't managed that, you know? So I just think the depiction of these guys is so extraordinary and so organic um, uh, that uh, I, I mean, I, I was really, really impressed by it. And I'm continuously impressed by it. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, for the, the director, um, uh, Joel McDonald, uh, I, you know, I think to his credit, he wanted some authenticity in those roles. Yeah. So he went for out gay actors to play them. Love that. I love it. Amen. Yeah, all right. Um, you got something? <clears throat> so, as and uh, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Uh -huh. um, being the struggles of a blacksmith, and not to mention the struggles of being in the Hephaestus family, did you ever find uh, any of his qualities, or at least playing the, or voicing the character? I've, I'm sorry, ask me that question again. <laughs> there was a lot of information in there. Sorry, as playing the character Wolf, did you ever, like, among his struggles, to ever find, like, some qualities of his character while either voicing him or playing the character? Well, you know, the, really the qualities of these characters all unfold before us. I mean, we don't get preparation mm -hmm. when we're doing anime. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll walk into a session, and I believe in this case I walked into that first session not knowing who the guy was. So, you know, the director gives you the lowdown, shows you, like, a couple of seconds of video of the character, and then this is the guy, let's, you know, take a stab. And then we roll in. So, like, you know, we, we, we can walk into a session working on a show and not even know what show it is until, <laughs> until we start recording. Right. Um, so I was not prepared with any information on Wealth. But, you know, the director of that, of that dub, Kyle Jones, um, knows me very well. We've been working together for a long time. And uh, Kyle always manages to 
Kyle's given me some of my most fun roles ever. Like, Wealth is so much fun. I mean, he's, he's, he's such an interesting cat. And, you know, Kyle Jones is the same uh, director who cast me as Bulat in A Kame Ga Kill. It was very meaningful oh, to yeah, me as uh, Berg Katze in Gachamar Crowds, which was about as much fun as it's legal to have in a recording studio, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, okay. um, Kyle knows me well, and he knows what territory I occupy most comfortably. And, you know, a smart ass like wealth, that's my territory. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, following up with that last question, uh, if you can say anything, or if you know anything about season two, um, particularly, do you like anything that uh, out of the evolution of wealth, or at least his character from season one? I think you get to see you get to see a little a little bit deeper into wealth. You know, he's he he has some allegiance switching and and some stuff. I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, you know that that season does go on to just. I mean, it really just lets these characters. It gives them a chance to be even more truly themselves, and wealth is no exception. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I look at him as kind of the Han Solo of the of the title. You that know very I mean? much makes sense. I agree, Dalton. Oh. Um not going to ask that question. Oh, He's God. already yeah. editing him himself. Whoops. Uh, so, um, you came into One Piece, uh, the One Piece universe, starting in the voicing role of Polly. Right. And then uh, adding Baron Tamago. Yes. Uh, have you ever had thoughts of uh, what it'd be like if you had a role for a character from the very beginning of the franchise and its overall longevity? Boy, I, wow. Well, there's what, like 7 million episodes of One Piece now, right? Yeah, like roughly. Uh, yeah. Last time I checked, it was like over 800. <laughs> I don't think, Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't change anything about it. Pauly was one of my earliest named roles at Funimation. Okay. So he represents sort of an arrival for me, you know, my sort of my bridging into the Dallas uh, scene from Houston, where I've been working for several years already. So Polly is very meaningful to me. And Tamago is extremely meaningful to me because he is redunculous. And <laughs> I love it. That little teacup on his head, that's all win. Nice. So I wouldn't change a thing. Okay. No. Cool. Um, going into a question about Domestic Girlfriend. Um, I know you said like you don't really know going into like for a role, you don't really know, know much about the character, or at, least, or at least much about the voice for the character. Um, I would like to ask that in voicing Rage, do, do you, given the consistent plot twists and character dynamics, did you have any like troubles voicing Rage? No, you know, really the nature of this game is, and it's one of the things, I mean, when you, after you've got some experience as an actor in this particular industry, which is very much, it, it, the thing I love most about it is being able to go into a session cold and just make really strong decisions immediately. And, you know, the, the director will sort of steer you another way. But you've got, um, you know, you have an opportunity to just run right into a character and, and you know, all, all pistons, you know, firing. And uh, uh, so, no, like, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's a chance to just sort of do what we do, you know, and just sort of close your eyes and feel your way through it. Sweet. Definitely hear you on that. So... Another part is like there's a like toward the end of the series, the catching like pretty much the main character. What was it like, kind of like, like finding that part of the not only finding that part of this of the series, but also kind of playing the role of a savvy kind of teacher yet novelist. I'm sorry, ask the question again. Uh, playing Reiji, pretty much uh, being the like, kind of the savvy novelist, he has non-invention, being a teacher, like also catching the like the like the protagonist and the other teacher in like the act, like. What was it kind of like playing not only that final scene, but also playing Reiji as a whole? Well, you know, they're all, all of the characters are, if we're successful, has some part of us. So, uh, you know, I don't, I, we don't have the luxury of changing someone's a character's reactions to things or changing their words really beyond a certain point. Um, oh, time's up. Oh. Yeah. Well, they put that up a little while ago. I, I, you know, to be honest, I don't remember Domestic Girlfriend X very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time, boys. You know? All right, all right. All right. <laughs> Mr. Wall, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. My it's pleasure. Nice meeting you. My pleasure. I bow to you. Yes, we bow to you. <laughs>